All right, so today we're going to be talking about how to solve math problems that involve constant acceleration. These problems can be kind of intimidating because we are going to be dealing with our three kinematic equations that we derived after our lab. And one of the problems with doing math problems with constant acceleration is that there are a lot of givens and we after we compile our givens we have to figure out which equation to use so this kind of becomes a confusing topic for some students so we're hopefully going to get some more practice in during this video and in class okay so in this first problem we've got a sprinter running at five meters per second and they're accelerating at a rate of negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared and we want to determine the time it takes for them to stop now right off the bat what we want to do is compile a list of givens and what i like to do is figure out what we're actually solving for and this problem says that we're solving for the time and what i'll do now is put a question mark for time in our givens okay now we've also got some other information I then would go to the numbers that we have. And it looks like initially the sprinter is running 5 meters per second. So that's our initial velocity. And it says our acceleration is negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Put that there. And... If we're not sure about which one is which, I always go with looking at the units. So here we see meters per second. That's a unit of velocity. So that's how you know it's either one of these two things. Okay. And here when you see meters per second squared, that little two means we're dealing with an acceleration. One thing we also have is our final velocity. Now we are not given a number for this, but it says that we are stopping at the end. So what we should do is say that stopping, if you're at rest, you're stopping. The final velocity is zero meters per second. Okay. Um, and lastly, what I'll do is you'll notice that in this problem, one thing is not mentioned. I always write missing for that. And in this case, our displacement is missing. So we do not have a displacement. And this is what is important even though displacement is not in the problem we're going to use it to solve the problem because what we're going to look at is we're going to find the equation that is missing delta x and you'll see that there's only one equation that's missing delta x and it's this one all right so this one has no delta x okay so the next step is to write out our equation And then we want to plug in what we have. So we've got our initial velocity here and our acceleration. Our time stays the same. And then we've also got our final velocity on the other side. That's a zero. Okay, solving for t, I'm going to subtract that 5 from both sides and I get negative 5 meters per second on the left and I got negative 0 0.5 meters per second squared times time on the right. Alright, I'm going to drop my units just for a moment. I've got negative 0 0.5 here and then divide both sides by negative 0 0.5 and I've got time is equal to after my calculator I've got time is equal to 10 seconds okay so it takes 10 seconds for them to stop okay let's try another one here we've got a car traveling at uh, 20 meters per second and slows down to stop at a red light that is 35 meters away uh, find its acceleration. So one thing I like to do sometimes is I'll like to draw a picture. So here we've got our car. And it's traveling at 20 meters per second. And we've got our red light here. 
and we know that it has to stop and hit the brakes for 35 meters away. We need to figure out um, its acceleration. So uh, here we go. We've got uh, our displacement, which is 35 meters. And we've also got our initial velocity, which is 20 meters per second. And we also know that we have a final velocity of zero meters per second. We need to find its acceleration. Okay. Now, one thing that was not mentioned in the problem at all is the time. So that's our missing variable. So once we know that, all we need to do is find the equation that does not contain time. And it looks like our third equation is the one that's going to do that. So let's, um, let's grab that equation. V squared is equal to 2 A delta X plus V initial squared. And let's just plug in everything that we know. We've got our velocity final squared, that's 0. We've got 2 times our acceleration, which stays the same since that's what we're solving for. And then we've got 35 plus our initial velocity squared. So that's 20 squared. Okay. Uh, this should be 70 times A plus 400. All right, so let's get A by itself. We'll subtract 400 from both sides. And that's 70A is equal to negative 400. Dividing 70 from both sides, we've got acceleration is equal to negative 5.71 meters per second squared. Now, one reason why I like to draw a picture sometimes is that it will help us visualize a problem and just understand what givens we have. Another reason is that it helps us check the answer. So if we have got a car that's traveling to the right, what our acceleration with this negative sign means is that it's accelerating to the left. So it allows us to see if something's reasonable and that, and if the car is slowing down, it would make sense for the acceleration to point left and the initial velocity to point right. Because remember, slowing down means that our velocity and acceleration point in opposite directions. So that, yes, this does make sense. So that's good for us. Negative 5.71 meters per second squared. Okay, let's try one more here. We've got a rocket ship that accelerates upwards. So here's our rocket. And it's got an acceleration of 15 meters per second squared. And we know that its initial velocity is zero meters per second. And during this problem, it reaches 1000 meters in the air. So we want to figure out how long does it take for it to reach a height of 1,000 meters, okay? So notice that it says how long and not how far. How far it goes is the 1,000. How long, like how long it takes is a time. So let's start by filling out our given. So we've got 15 meters per second squared. We've got our initial velocity is zero meters per second. Uh, we've got our displacement is 1,000 meters and we want to know the time okay which means that our final velocity is missing in this one okay now looking at our equations it looks like that the equation that we want that's missing final velocity is this one so notice how this one does not have final velocity so uh writing down the equation And we've, let's plug in what we know. We've got 1,000 for our displacement. We've got 1 half. Our acceleration is 15. 
you want to figure out the time. And we've got the initial velocity times the time. And this term is going to cancel out because this is a zero here, right? So all we've got to solve is 1,000 is equal to 7.5 times time squared. Dividing both sides by 7.5, I get 133.33 repeating. We got t squared on the other side, and then taking the square root of both sides. I have plus or minus 11.55 seconds. Now, there's no such thing as negative time in this class, and I'm going to keep the positive. And there we go. So we've got the time is 11.55 seconds for this problem. All right, let's go over some of the some helpful tips. Uh, now these are things that you probably noticed that I did when I did these uh, last three problems. Okay, one thing uh, that I find helps is to draw a picture, a rough motion map. This allows you to visualize what's happening in the problem, uh, see our setup, see what uh, givens we have, and it also allows us to see if our answer is reasonable. Another thing that I did was uh, always make a givens list. We definitely gives you give you points for these, so make sure that you always list your givens and organize them so you know what we have to work with. Uh, look for key words and key phrases. One thing that you'll you saw in some of the problems is that there are key words that I use to solve the problem. So if you see something is at rest, or it says how long, or how far, something stops. This usually means something. It, it either it tells us that something is stopping, which means a velocity is zero somewhere, and also. Um, key phrases like how long, that means solve for time, how far, solve for displacement. So those are uh, some key phrases where we're telling you information, but not really. Um, last thing is also always label something that's missing or not mentioned in the problem with the word missing in our givens list. Okay, this is extremely important because one confusing thing is that most students don't know which equation to use, but if you find that something's not mentioned in the problem, that will help you identify the equation because the equation you want is the thing that's missing the variable that we don't have, okay? Now, um, this does take some practice to get used to, but that's like everything in this class, so keep up at it and we'll talk in class.